It's my pleasure to introduce or introduce you all to Dr. Kolis Abdurahim Auda. Dr. Auda done his Master's in Molecular Biology from the University of Malaysia in the year 2000. He was awarded his PhD in the field of biochemistry from the Auburn University, USA. He went on to pursue his postdoctoral research at Yale University, USA in the area of infectious diseases. He began his academic career as assistant professor in 2009 at the University of Hanley, Saudi Arabia, where he soon became the head of the biochemistry department. And he went on to become the director of Center for Infectious Diseases Research at Zuvia University, Indonesia. During his brief string, the Indonesian International Institute for Life Science since 2014, he headed the bioinformatics program and was the active vice president of academic affairs. After joining Swiss German University in 2015, he served as Vice Director of Research for two years. Dr. Audas research exposed Indonesian biodiversity for drug discovery through the development of natural product extract library focusing on antimicrobial agents. He has over 28 publications in reputed international journals and he writes scientific, educational and research articles in mass media and has authored two books. Dr. Auda is currently the Director of Research and Community Service at the Swiss German University in Tangerang, Indonesia. And with that brief note of introduction, I invite Dr. Kolos Auda to take over the session. Thank you very much for a very nice introduction, Ms. Uh, Trivandrum, our Master of Ceremony today. Uh, very good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before I start my talk today, I would like to thank uh, Prof. G.M. Nair, the, the chair of the CAS, the president of the CAS, and also uh, Dr. al Faisam, and all the committee members, and my special thanks to Dr. Ramesh Kumar for having me today. It is a great honor for me to be here, uh, to be invited as a speaker for a renowned scientist such as uh, Professor Abdul Qadir Hisham. It is a great pleasure for me to be here today. So, um, a little bit about my background. To be honest with you, I'm not a very pure uh, phytochemist. Actually, I'm a, bi a bio protein biochemist uh, by training. Uh, but since my return to Indonesia, I tried to find something that maybe uh, would be more beneficial for, for our country, for my country, in Indonesia especially, uh, to really explore uh, the richness of Indonesian biodiversity. So my today's talk will not be very uh, presenting sophisticated uh, or current technology in phytochemistry, but I will try to give you a brief overall about what I have been doing in the last few years in Indonesia. So please allow me to share my slide right now. Okay, are you seeing the slide, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, yes, yes. yes please, All right, please. so I try to give you uh, a good impression about my talk. So I put this background because this is uh, really mainly about my research, which is the mangrove. So, but before I started uh, again, uh, I feel very honored to be invited uh, in this very prestigious uh, webinar on phytochemistry impact and applications and Professor Dr. Abdul Qadir Hisham Endowment Lecture. So again, uh, I work in Swiss German University uh, as the Director for Research and Community Service yeah. and also a Senior Lecturer in the Department of Biomedical Engineering. So uh, please allow me to just briefly about my university. Uh, Swiss German University is established in 2000 as a first private uh, international university in Indonesia. It is a quite small university. Uh, we have only about three faculties, uh, 11 bachelor degree and three master degree. And uh, our main instruction is English, but also students have to take German as their second foreign language because during six semester, all the students have to go to Germany or Switzerland 
to do their uh, dual degree, double joint degree with a uh, German or Swiss university. And also they do also internship. They do twice internship in Indonesia once and also uh, one more time in, the, in, the, in Germany and Switzerland. So we have about 180 full times and 90 part time uh, lectures. So uh, this is briefly about my talk today. We'll be talking about Indonesian biodiversity and then we'll talk about research priority in Indonesia. We'll talk about world natural products facts and development. And we'll talk also development of mangrove extract library, uh, which I'm working now. Uh, and then we'll be talking about mangrove as potential drugs, either both uh, for antibacterial and anti-cancer. And I'm also going to be presenting my um, other topics. It's not really uh, related to bench work, but it's more like into uh, bioinformatics area. Uh, and then I will conclude my talk with conclusion and future direction. So uh, for those who are not very familiar with Indonesia, uh, by the way, I am very familiar with Kerala because whenever I go, when I studied in Malaysia, I studied in the United States, I work in Saudi Arabia, I always meet at least one or two person from Kerala. So I'm very familiar with Kerala. In fact, my children all go to school uh, were uh, managed by Kerala teachers. Yeah, so <laughs> very familiar. So it's a small word, yeah. So uh, Indonesia in terms of populations, of course, is not as many as India, but we are actually in the fourth largest country in the world in terms of uh, population. Of course, after China, India, United States, and Indonesia. Yeah. Uh, in terms of geographic location, we are in the center of uh, equator, yeah, uh, really in the center of equator. So we have a very hot, humid climate. And we have around or more than 13,000 islands and with the tropical climate. So you can imagine with this climate, uh, we are a sanctuary of different types of biodiversity, both on land and also in, in, on the, in the marine. So as the result of that, we are considered one of the mega biodiverse countries in the world. So we are very rich in terms of natural resources. Some studies, uh, said that we are number one in terms of marine population and number two after Amazon in terms of uh, land biodiversity. So this is a very uh, good asset for Indonesia uh, actually. So in terms, uh, as we can see here, <clears throat> the, the tribes, yeah, Indonesia is also has, I'm not very familiar with the tribes number in India, but we at least have around 300, uh, 300 ethnic groups yeah, uh, spread all over Indonesia from, from the west here until the east. It spans about 5,000 kilometers far. Yeah? And here, as uh, the statistics uh, showed us about where Indonesian, the position in terms of uh, biodiversity. So again, the reason why I, when I returned to Indonesia in, and I started in 2013, I think, uh, I have somehow must promote this Indonesian biodiversity and of course for the sake of uh, for mankind yeah so uh, let me just briefly uh, tell you about research priority in Indonesia so Indonesian government has a strategic plan for research from 2015 until 2044 and as it is shown here that natural resources based applied research here yeah i mean maybe it highlight here yeah so become uh the priority top priority although here until 2015 but uh in fact the reality is until now we are still focusing on emphasizing on natural resources based applied research so and i believe it will last at least until 2020 2030 so what I'm trying to show you here is that we are so much uh, into biodiversity, yeah. And from international point of view, uh, such as Germany, for example, or any other uh, countries in the Europe, 
they also try to collaborate in Indonesia to explore this uh, mega biodiversity. So it means that uh, we are actually uh, attract many people around the world uh, to work with us and to explore biodiversity in uh, for for different type of purpose conservation of course also drug discovery and so on so uh here just to give you again uh, another perspective about how much research in natural product based in indonesia uh i can i can safely say that um most if not all public universities in indonesia uh, do research in natural product base yeah especially uh, those uh, government owned university which are the largest universities in indonesia they all do research on product based uh, natural product based university uh, research in indonesia uh, we have around more than 4000 universities actually in indonesia but the majority are private university even a small private university such as Swiss German University, we are really into biodiversity research. So uh, the majority of our research in our faculty, especially the Faculty Life Science and Technology, are focusing on Indonesian biodiversity, either for drug discovery or functional food, and even for energy, uh, renewable energy. So we have a good collection of uh, herbal and then uh, that had been utilized by Indonesian people for quite uh, for generation basically so uh this is just again to refresh our memory about indonesian biodiversity we talk about potentials of course and but don't forget at the same time uh this biodiversity also uh having a side uh, a negative things yeah which is the threat for, come from the biodiversity so here are some of the potentials uh we have about more than 50,000 species of plants and more than 30,000 endemic species so belongs to Indonesia and around 6,000 species used for jamu. Jamu is a traditional medicine that had been used by Indonesian people for generations maybe centuries or even maybe a, a millennium yeah so we have so much this kind of herbal and then uh, and we we use this as daily uh, supplement actually of course, our government tried to improve the quality of this herbal medicine by applying different types of, uh, for example, we try to uh, increase the level of this herbal traditional medicine to phytopharmaca and so on and so forth. Yeah. In terms of fauna, we are the 12% of the world's mammal, 16% yeah? of the world's reptiles and amphibians, 70% of the world's birds, and more importantly, we are the 24th side uh, of, we possess about 25% of global fish population. So when we talk about fish populations, we are number one in the world. We can claim that, yeah. And this also very important because nowadays the, the marine uh, drug discovery is becoming uh, very sexy nowadays. And we have at least, uh, well, will be more than just 1,650 coral fish in Indonesia because this is only from the eastern Indonesia alone. So having all this uh, the potential, it means that it's all up to us on how we want to really uh, utilize this to the maximum, but at the same time, uh, we have to use this responsibly. So uh, in addition to, the, well, not at least, in, uh, beside the potential, yeah, we also the threat, of course, yeah. Uh, as a country with quite dense population, especially in Jakarta area, well, I believe also in India and Delhi, Mumbai, probably, uh, we always, we are always facing the health issues. Yeah, in fact, the the WHO, even this is a quiet report, but it's still relevant. So apparently, about thirty new diseases emerge in every twenty years, and. As a pyta chemist, I think, uh, ladies and gentlemen here, know much better than me on how the process of drug discovery, uh, how slow yeah, and expensive, lengthy uh, drug discovery process is. Yeah, so we have to come up with a solution uh, to really uh, 
outpaced the, the emerging of the disease, not to mention our current situation with the pandemic. And uh, it seems to be the mutations uh, going on and on without stopping, and we don't know when it's going to stop. Yeah. So uh, in 2017, WHO released uh, 12 bacteria for which new antibiotics are urgently needed. Uh, so this is very interesting and, of course, very challenging. We know that we are facing so much problem with drug-resistant uh, bacteria. So uh, in the effort of finding new uh, antibiotics, yeah, apparently the antibiotics that have been used before is no longer efficient yeah, against the existing one. So this is what I'm trying to uh, remind all of us that the emerging of disease is quite much faster compared to the drug discovery process. So in Indonesia, for example, even worse, uh, I show you here one of type of uh, mosquitoes, Aedes aegypti. So Aedes aegypti is one type of uh, mosquitoes that has been used as vectors for so many kind of viruses. Yeah, for example, dengue fever, yeah, and then chikungunya, also yellow fever. It has the same vector, which is dengue, uh, Aedes aegypti uh, mosquitoes. Yeah, not to mention other uh, other vectors such as malaria, yeah, and other, of course, uh, tuberculosis and other diseases. Yeah, so it's it's really really challenging for us. And this is a fact, interesting fact and also worrisome, and we don't know, of course, uh, little to know about these viruses, uh, but this is a research conducted by a group in Santa Barbara, University of California, Santa Barbara, in which they discover that in a liter of seawater collected near the Galapagos Islands contains at least 10 billion microbes and 100 billion viruses. Which, in which the vast majority of which remains unidentified and uncharacterized. God forbid, yeah, thanks God that now this virus is not being transmitted yet to human, but nobody knows in the future, yeah, with the climate change and human behavior, human uh, activities, maybe one or two of these viruses one day can become uh, virulent to human. So we have to be prepared for that. So having also this, uh, we have to come up with a solution and how, of course, we have to find out around surrounding us. Uh, we have to learn from our environment, from our uh, surrounding, and especially in terms of Indonesia, uh, which are now, we are silly. Uh, I, don't, I know in the case of India, uh, you, you guys can really produce a lot of things, but this is a fact in Indonesia, 90% of drug materials in Indonesia are imported. Yeah, And we know that drug discovery is a lengthy and expensive process. It can reach up to one US billion dollar and as, as long as it can take as long as 12 to 15 years. Yeah, So this is really a big challenge, a big task for all of us to really find the alternative solution. And the question is how, yeah? So, uh, that is what bring me actually. Yeah, why I try to not really switch because I always try to relate this 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 research with my previous background in enzyme and also protein uh, biochemistry, and uh, we also I'll be presented also a, a bit about that later on. So the idea is how we explore Indonesian biodiversity. Yeah, uh, to really maximize optimize the potential to overcome the threats that might be coming yeah, uh, sooner or later yeah, in the future, yeah, including nowadays yeah, about the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So I've been uh, uh, working with this since I returned and since I started at the SU. So just briefly uh, look at, have a look on the World Natural Products Facts and Development just to uh, give us some uh, confidence in what in the direction that we are going that we are in the right path exploring biodiversity for drug discovery so this is a basic concept in nature that we know about antigen and antibody concept a venom venom and also antidote antidote concept 
and we believe that this should also apply to medicines that all the disease are existing right now have should have one cure or drug in the nature so uh this is just again uh to remind us all these uh discoveries before about different plants and also the drugs uh, that contain in the, in the plants and also medical application this have been practiced in in, in indonesia china and india and, and and so on and in fact indonesia has a very unique history about quinone yeah because it was first founded discovered in indonesia for malaria yeah uh, in the dutch era colonial era a long time ago so also by accident but apparently uh, there are so many uh, derivation of quinone that can be found in different organisms, not only in Indonesia, of course, but also around the world, in, including China, such as artemisin. So uh, this is a very interesting fact. Whenever I have the opportunity to present my talk, <clears throat> I always try to put this uh, in my slide, just again to support the idea of exploring in, uh, the biodiversity. So this is quite uh, recently, I, I took this from uh, Natural Products Review uh, from 2020, Newman and Craig, I believe uh, you are all familiar about this name. So apparently about 53.3% of FDA or other similar institution approved drug are derived from natural products or their derivatives. And even more interestingly about anti-cancer drugs. 75% in some literature, even in fact, it says 80% of anti-cancer drug are derived, come from natural products or their derivatives. So uh, by they using in the means of uh, screening, so they, they found that about one in 1000 natural extract uh, is used as medicine, still more favorable than development using synthetic compounds. This is a very interesting fact. So again here, I would like to show you how NIH, in this case is NCI, the National Cancer Institute. That is the reason why this discovery here, yeah, the 75% is not come to surprise because apparently they have a collection as many as 230,000 unique extracts. It is uh, that become the driving force of my research and because i tried to have some discussion with different institute in indonesia when i returned and apparently indonesia as country we don't have this kind of activities yet in the country we collect extract they collect extract as many as 230,000 extracts from all over the world from plant from marine and microorganisms but we indonesia for example and i believe also indonesia has a very good natural resources still don't have this kind of uh activities yeah so that's why i try to initiate this so my talk will be more about that rather than a very specific uh area so this is the emerging market for natural products medicines uh, for example albany milk research new york usa uh, they have about three hundred thousand fraction collections and i have been contacted by a few of course couple companies uh, small companies that are interested in our work uh, one of these is actually Green Pharma from Spain, yeah. But of course, they are a small company. They are not interested to get me funding, yeah. But thanks God, I got funded from uh, our government. So the idea of uh, that I come to mind is that how we develop uh, extract library from Indonesian virus for drug discovery purpose. Because eventually, we we want to do some a lot of uh, high throughput screening. If we have the, the requirement is that we have to have a sufficient amount of extracts. So, so the the materials that I've been using is actually from mangroves. Uh, the idea also comes very simple. I learned about mangroves. I visited an uh, area of mangroves in one of the some islands in the in the middle of Indian Ocean, yeah, yeah. Ocean. yeah. Indian Ocean. Uh, so I learned that mangroves are very versatile uh, plants. So no wonder they should have a lot of uh, something going on in the in the in the plants, yeah, in terms of uh, phytochemical or metabolites. So Indonesia, along roughly has ninety thousand kilometer coastline, is home about twenty families uh, with one hundred species of mangrove and their associate. Indonesia has the largest mangrove forest, or about twenty three percent of total world mangroves. 
and mangroves and mangrove associate have diverse and highly potential bioactive compounds. Well, of course, people not only working on the plants, but also the soil and also the fungus in the, in the mangrove. Yeah. So this is the spread of uh, mangrove habitats around the world, yeah, uh, including India, I believe here. And uh, this is just briefly about uh, classification of mangrove. There is major components and minor components through mangrove and also mangrove associate and halophytes. So what I'm trying to do here is not only uh, we initiate actually, because this is considered a relative new area for Indonesian uh, people that work on mangrove for drug discovery. So we propose different types of method and also protocols. So we, we want to ensure that the research on mangrove uh, follow certain protocols that is uh, proven to be uh, to be good enough yeah uh, uh, to maintain maintain to ensure the standard of the research yeah so we propose all these protocols to the ministry and we will present this in uh, hopefully by the end of this year so this is again about sampling we also do sampling uh, we, we will we will record how what is the best sampling method and sampling packaging and also uh, species identification. This is one very important aspect actually, because it happened to us when we try to submit a paper to uh, a journal, they asked me a very detailed uh, identification until the person who is person in charge, who is, who is the person who give the permission and so on and so forth. That is why we want to put this in, in our protocols. So everyone who do the research using Indonesian biodiversity will have this in their report. So this is the uh, the certificate of identification uh, issued by our Indonesian Society, Indonesian Institute for Sciences. Yeah. <clears throat> this is the storage. Also, we learn about the storage, sample preparation, and extraction. Of course, you will derive, you will generate a tons of methods of this uh, extraction with different solvents, with different condition, and so on and so forth. And in fact, we also uh, learn about ultra uh, certification. Yeah, about this, and it, it was. Uh, found that quite effective. So if you see here how beautiful the color here is, it means that it contains different uh, various uh, phytochemical contents, right? Uh, from the orange, uh, brown, yeah, light brown, it's dark brown, different kind of colors, which really strongly indicate that mangrove has different a variety of phytochemical contents. And this is just some uh, brief phytochemical analysis of mangrove extract. And then we uh, do this uh, uh, screening to different types of bacteria and also cancer cell. So here are some work that had been done. Yeah, of course, this is just the beginning. Uh, the antibacterial screenings of mangrove extract library. We tested again some uh, to some bacteria and also some to the pathogen, microbial pathogen. We can clearly uh, show here that it is quite effective. The 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 extract, yeah. And this is already published uh, last year. And we see a very strong potential of, of mangrove here, yeah? Uh, as you see, as well from the zone of inhibition, yeah? So this is very, very strong indication that this type of mangrove is very potential for uh, antibacteria, as well as this one. So then we also follow this, yeah? Uh, tested against other um, microbes. We also do fingerprint profiling extracts and by photography yeah to see which fraction is active and which are not active against certain bacteria we also do uh, stability tests yeah, to see whether the storage give an impact to the uh, activity indeed yeah it does give the impact to the activity we tested both in on in bacteria and as, as well as on the cancer cell so it reduced about 20 percent activity yeah so uh, we try. We did also uh, screening against some highly pathogenic bacteria, for example, to MRSA. This one had not been published yet. We are still uh, writing the paper for this one. Uh, if you if you can if you can see here, it has a very good potential. Uh, among uh, one out of five species, yeah, had shown a very good potential activity again MRSA, methicillin resistant, uh, resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Yeah, this is the uh, species of Sonaratia cellaris. We also tested the extracts against Fibrio cholerae. 
uh, we see here some good potential. Yeah, this is the sample, the extract. This is the fraction. You see, once we, if you see this, this is the crude extract. This is a good potential, even only 8.2, because this is a crude extract. As you can see here, once we fractionize, the zone inhibition is increased, yeah, almost nearly double. So it's a good indication that this have a very good uh, potential for S antibacteria. Then our latest uh, publication is on anti-cancer drugs. Yeah, so we just recently in the last uh, this year, 2020, we published this uh, on Silocarpus granatum uh, extract, ethyl acetate extract, against different cell lines. So it strongly indicate that uh, the extract mangrove has the ability to inhibit uh, the cancer cell line, but at the same time, yeah. When we test this uh, uh, extract to the healthy cell, the healthy cell become grows even faster. So that's a very good indication. It means that the, the our extract first is not toxic to the human, and at the same time has the potential to stop the proliferation of cancer cells. Yeah. Out of these three cancer cells, breast cancer, cervical cancer, and also colon cancer, we found out that the colon cancer was showed the most uh, the the most the the inhibited one yeah the highly highly inhibited from by this using ethyl acetate extract so uh this is again the number anti-cancer icpt uh from silocarpus granatum if you see here it indicate that the, this is the uh, colon cancer this is cervical cancer this is the breast cancer and we test it again in fact uh even better than the positive control cis button so it's very has a uh, good indication so this is correlation between antioxidant and anti-cancer activity, yeah, uh, showing a very good correlation. Correlation, and these are some compounds that we discovered uh, out of NMR uh, spectral analysis. Uh, but of course, we still need to do other uh, method LCMSMS. We just recently received a their, uh, result last week, so we received about 472 pages of uh, LCMSMS results. So it need to be analyzed. So. I am very interested with the Dr. Krishna Mohan presentation just now about DJ Mall, doctor. So we might be able to collaborate later on uh, to analyze our LCM MS data. So we have, because we have a plenty of uh, compounds, unknown compounds, yeah, uh, that might be uh, discovered in your database, yeah. So uh, my second part of talk is actually a development of natural products library. This is more into bioinformatics, yeah. So what we are trying to do is actually uh, do some collection, of course, the natural products, yeah. But at the same time, we also uh, establish or develop a database, yeah. So by definition, the natural products library is a collection of rich products containing active compounds used for screening process of target biology. This is actually the picture from GSK company that has the fantastic facilities to do screening, a lot of screening and community chemistry. Uh, to for drug discovery. So, so what is Inpel? What we are, ha what we have is actually Inpel. The name is Inpel, the Indonesian Natural Products Library. It is a repository link databases of Indonesian biology with known functions, specifically for drug discovery purposes. So, the two main objective of Inpel is as a database and of of course also also as a repository, physical repository. So, the role of Inpel is a window to Indonesian-based biodiversity research in which people from all over the world can know well we'll see what what we have yeah it, of course this is just or again uh, in the early of development so this is a platform uh, that links the virtual and physical repository of indonesian biodiversity so if you can imagine you can imagine how much data can be generated from only single uh, species not even species one single solvent yeah we can generate so much data and those data yeah uh, actually has a uniqueness every single data they have their own uniqueness yeah even though we collect let's say an extract from the same plant from the same solvent but if we collect it from different places or even different latitude altitude we certainly will have uh, a different collection of compounds that is why it is extremely important to really uh, record all this data and then we can do a lot of 
things with a simulation that Dr. Dr. Krishna Mohan did just now. So uh, from all this generated data, we have physical collection as an extracts, fractions, and also single compound. And then we construct this uh, using a um, certain method to construct Impel database. So this is the, peer, the appearance of the website, either with Impel with E with or without E. Yeah, we have this. So you can also search Impel.id. And this is we we try to uh, people can sign up, yeah, to deposit their data because that is the intention. Actually, maybe we'll next year we'll uh, we we'll do that because uh, our funding will last for three years hopefully, and we will test next week the next year the system if the system is okay or not. So and another uh, another uh, application we we make both application and also the website. The Impel, we bake uh, the website, uh, the database, and also the application. And we also make another application, what's called SITMED. SITMED is actually more popular than Impel. If Impel required a specific species name, but SITMED need a local name. So we, if we send this, uh, we will uh, deliver this to Play Store, and people will contribute, deposit their data from all over Indonesia or even from the world so uh, anything can uh, can be stored here so this is are just some existing libraries in nih natural products libraries have uh, this kind of campbell i'm sure that uh, all the doctor professor students are very familiar with campbell actually we for impel we use campbell as our benchmark and this is knapsack from japan i met the inventor prof uh, sensei kanaya uh, two years about three years ago uh, and they, he suggested me to include uh, metabolites profiling in the in our database. So uh, I understand. I'm aware that this work is huge, is big. I will not be able to do by myself. So that's why uh, we need a lot of uh, parties to work together, coordinate, cooperate, and collaborate. And perhaps Indonesia in the future, because also I also founded. Uh, was so called Indonesian Society for Bioinformatics and Biodiversity in 2016. So our main aim is to establish Indonesian Center for Bioinformatics. So we need this for protection, conservation, preservation, responsible exploration, research and development, and of course, industrial implementation. So these are some uh, our collaboration consortium extract library with different universities and institutions, uh, both Indonesia and also Malaysia so far. Uh, these are some work that has been published, yeah. Uh, also have been presented, yeah, in Indonesia and also Malaysia. Hopefully, I hope, really hope uh, to visit Kerala one day, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, this day is not very good, yeah. Uh, so, let me finish with the conclusion that so far we've been working on protocols and methods in for development of Indonesian Edge Products Library, yeah. And we have more than 64 extracts right now, but the thing is that uh, we try to move this forward as soon as possible and to engage more people. Yeah, I try to engage uh, all big people in Indonesia and in, especially in Indonesian Academic of Science yeah, to get involved in this because I need endorsement from them. Otherwise, nobody will see my work. Uh, okay, this is a future direction, hopefully. Uh, in the 2019, I was invited by Thailand government to present about the similar work. Uh, I learned that Thailand has high throughput screening technology that we all need yeah, because this is a very high tech and very expensive. So I don't think we have to buy each country, but we can always collaborate uh, one another. So last but not least, I would like to acknowledge uh, my research groups and also my collaborators. I collaborate uh, work uh, with many parties and of course funding with from SGU and also from companies and also from the Ministry in Indonesia and also from uh, Malaysian government through matching funding with United uh, University of Malaysia at Sabah in Malaysia. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Dr. Collis, for uh, the exhaustive and well-described uh, lectures. 
we are indeed very happy that you have depicted what is happening in uh, Indonesia and also your uh, willingness to collaborate with Kerala or with India for your future programs. I'm sure that there is a scope for future time ahead and we will definitely make use of this opportunity in the best possible way. Thank you very much for the excellent lecture and thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Ramesh.